Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com. And if you've noticed in the last couple of years, a lot of pen companies have been coming out with flexible nib options, or at least very soft nib options that give you some line variation. I get asked a lot of times about how one pen compares to another and all this kind of stuff. And I've never really done like a super comprehensive. I've done some in the past on some of the Noodler's pens maybe, but I haven't really done across brands. So I was, what happened was I was going ahead and I was inking up um, the Omas Ojiva Alba to do a writing sample for the nib nook. I had a bunch of other pens laying around. I was like, you know what? It would probably be super handy if I just went ahead and did a writing sample showing um, I picked five pens. So I have the Omas Ojiva Alba with the 14 karat extra fine, extra flexible. I have a soft extra fine Pilot Falcon. I have the Stipula Splash. I have the Noodler's Neponset, and I have the Noodler's Ahab. So all of these are flex nib pens, or at least soft nib, that give you some pretty good line variation. And I get into it a little bit showing you how one nib varies from another. It's not the most comprehensive video in the world, but it's better than anything I've put out so far regarding all these different nibs. So I think that you'll enjoy it. Check it out. So I'm really happy today because my fingers are nice and inky. This is when I feel really good. Uh, the first pen I want to ink up and show you is the Noodler's Ahab. So this is the same nib that's on the Noodler's Conrad as well. Performance is pretty similar to the Noodler's Nib Creeper. So all these pens, I'm kind of lumping them into the same thing, kind of having representative of this one. And yeah, it definitely looks like I don't know how to handle some ink. I've been cleaning out a lot of pens and taking them apart and so on. That's why it's so bad. This isn't just from filling. I promise I'm competent with a pen. But anyway, um, so Noodler's Ahab. So it's a stainless steel nib. Whoa, that's not supposed to be an A. Whatever, you get the idea. Noodler's Ahab. So it's got some good line very. Oh my gosh, I can't freaking spell. Okay, but it's got some good line variation. So the thin lines are really fairly thin. And then when you write down, you give it some good pressure. You can get some really good variation. So, I mean, it's a $20 pen. It's had, you know, it's been around for a couple of years. It's, it's been received pretty well. There are some people that have issues. The pen can be a little finicky. You know, even I've, part of the reason my fingers are inky like this is because I had to adjust the nib and feed a little bit. Um, you might have to heat set them every now and then, but you know, it's a $20 pen. Like it's gonna take a little bit of tinkering. People are looking for the Ahab. Definitely don't expect it to be like perfect every time. A lot of them are fine and they're, they don't need a lot of tinkering. But if it does need that, don't be completely surprised, you know? So um, I'm using Noodler's Black, by the way, as my ink of choice today. It's just the most familiar one that I've had. Um, Drew, my um, customer care manager, he's a big fan of flex pens. He actually prefers Heart of Darkness in all of his flex pens. He's found that to be just the ink that performs kind of the best all around, in his opinion. But anyway, so this gives you a little bit idea of the performance of the Noodler's Ahab. So the next one I wanted to show you is the Pilot Falcon. This pen's been around for a number of years, but this one is actually the soft extra fine version, which hasn't been around that long. Um, but I, that's one I'm gonna show you just because it gets the most line variation. Now, I personally am not as big of a fan of the way that this nib feels. It is a lot finer, you know, it's a Japanese pen. Um, it does give good line variation, but it's um, it sacrifices a little bit in the smoothness, especially when you're actually doing the flexing. So it's um, it does get you a finer line than the Ahab does. And when you flex it out, it doesn't flex out quite as broadly as the Ahab does. So you, you really don't wanna overdo it with this pen. Now it's tough because this one, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube and stuff like that that show people really kind of going nuts. And some of the videos, especially some of the ones that have gone viral, show pens that have been modified. So, you know, be careful when you're doing this and, and set your expectations properly. But um, you'll see if you're trying to write with this Falcon, you get a thinner line. It's not maybe quite as broad, as drastic as the Ahab, but if you want to write small, you know, this is the one to do. So let me give you some X's here. Bam. Okay. Oh, I should put in here SEF. So for me personally, not as enjoyable of a writing experience just because it's not quite as smooth. 
The soft fine is significantly better though. It's really just that extra fine that I find to be kind of cumbersome. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna show you in here is the Noodler's Neponset because this pen um, has kind of recently come out. Um, and this one is, is, you know, really gotten a lot of people stirred up. We've only ever had one shipment of them, um, but I thought it would be good to kind of show you what's going on with it. So this is definitely a broader, really wet pen, really wet. Okay. The nib is actually fairly smooth, so I got no complaints there. But you can see in comparison to the Falcon, it's just like not quite the same kind of pen. So this is about the thinnest line you're gonna get. You know, about a probably medium nib, maybe even closer to a broad. Um, but then when you wanna flex this thing out, oh, see I'm running a little dry. I didn't check to see if, I haven't filled this thing in a couple of days. There we go. This thing is an ink monster. So it definitely consumes some significant ink. And I'm having some flow issues. You know, this is just not uh, super uncommon to have to play around with it. I honest to goodness have not played with the Neponset quite as much as maybe I would have liked to but let me prime it up a little bit. Sorry, I know I'm doing all this off camera. Give me a sec. Okay. So when it's primed up properly, <laughs> you can get an insane line width out of this thing. So it's, it's definitely not gonna be like an everyday writer unless you're writing really large on very, kind of ink resistant paper, but you can see it's almost more like a paintbrush, you know what I mean? Just like the line variation that you get on this thing. And the dry time is gonna be insane because this thing just dumps more ink than any pen that I've ever seen. Um, but there you have it. It's just crazy how broad it gets, how wet it gets. It'll probably be drying for the rest of this video. But that's the Neponset, you know? And it was even a little finicky in this video here, so I'm not trying to hold too much and make you seem like everything's perfect. Um, that one will take a little bit of tinkering as well. It's a $75 pen, you know? The Noodler's Ahab's 20 bucks, the Falcon's 144, and the, um, the Neponset, that one's 75. So it's not about the price though, necessarily. I mean, the price, there's so many different factors when it comes to price with these pens that it's really not just about you know, oh, if I spend more money, I'll have a better flex pen per se. There's a lot of different factors going on, but I'm just trying to at least show you how they write so you get some idea if the price is worth for you. The next pen I have here, this is a Stipula Splash. I've been intending to do a video on this one. I haven't gotten around to it yet, so this is kind of the first foray I've ever had. This pen's a lot smaller, um, and it's a, a clear body demonstrator kind of thing. The nib is definitely smaller on this pen than on the other pens, but let me show you how it writes. So this pen has what's, it's a stainless steel pen. It has what's called their, their uh, V-Flex. They have a T-Flex, it's a titanium flex nib, which if I thought about it, I could have inked up for this video, but oh well, it's too late now. Um, this one is called their V-Flex, so it's their stainless steel. I don't know what the V stands for, honestly, but um, you can see it's got some variation. Um, it takes more writing pressure, and of course now it's uh, skipping out on me. You're noticing that this is kind of a trend with a lot of flex pens, but, um, I'm going too fast probably, but it's um, it's got some decent variation to it. You know, it's not too bad. It's gonna be somewhat similar to the Ahab, except this one does not have an ebonite feed. So it's um, it's struggling to keep up a little bit, a little bit with me here. You know, this is one that the ink will be a little bit finicky depending on your ink choice. So you'll have to play around to kind of find out what it is and writing slower definitely helps. But there's no heat setting or anything that you can do with this one. Um, this pen is, uh, you know, $64. So it's, um, you know, kind of right in that range, like around the Neponset and all that. It's breaking up just a little bit. 
but this one I've had kind of mixed, you know, experiences with personally. Um, this is kind of on the worse end of what I'm normally seeing. So probably not representing as well as it could, but you know, this is real. This is what I'm experiencing right in this moment. I could tinker, tinker around with it some more, practice a little more, and it would be better. But that is what is, is capable on the Stipula Splash. And then um, the last one I have here is the Omas Ojiva Alba with the 14 karat extra fine, extra flexible. And this one is definitely the most expensive out of the bunch. It's $500. But I don't want you to think that because it's $500, you're going to get necessarily 25 times the benefit of a Noodler's Ahab. There's a law of diminishing returns when it comes to fountain pens, just like there is with everything. There's a lot of other things going on with this pen. I've already explained kind of what this pen has going on in several other Omas videos. But in terms of how it writes, how it flexes out, I thought I would show you here. This one I'm having to really control myself because all of these other pens take a good amount of pressure to write. The Falcon, not quite as much because it is a gold nib. All the steel ones, you gotta really press on them. You know, that's just how they are. Um, but this pen really doesn't take a lot of pressure. I'm just gonna write 14K EF. I'm not gonna write out extra flexible so I can have all of the samples kind of next to each other. So you can see the line width here on the extra fine is pretty comparable to the Falcon. It's finer than all the other ones. Um, and then flexing it out, um, I don't want to flex this thing out crazy because I am really not putting a lot of pressure on here. You know, it's gonna flex out about the same as a Falcon, maybe a hair less. It's not gonna be the same as the Ahab and even the Stipula Splash goes out a little broader. But the thing is that this thing is so much softer, it requires a lot less pressure than all the rest of these. So you have to be careful with it, especially if you're used to some of these other ones, because you can spring the tines on this easier than you might think um, by putting too much writing pressure. You really gotta have a light hand with the Omos, which is nice, but you gotta go easy on it. You know, treat it like it's a $500 pen. There we go. So I would say if you're looking for the Omos, if you want a little bit of line variation here and there, great. But don't buy this $500 pen thinking, oh, I spent so much money, I can really go crazy with this nib. That's not really the case. If that's what you're looking for, I would say go with something like the Ahab where it's $20. You can buy a replacement nib for a couple dollars if you do spring it or screw it up and you're good to go. There's a lot of other reasons that you might want the Omos but there you have it. So that is all of these pens. Writing samples, not perfect. Got my hands kind of inky. Showed you some railroading and some other things. You know, the, the overall thing that's important with all these flex pens is they take practice. Practice that I have not even necessarily done myself with some of these newer pens, but that's what it is. So if you are Wanting to get into a flex pen, this gives you a little bit of an idea of maybe some of the ones that you can consider, show you maybe what distinguishes them a little bit from each other, um, but be prepared to do a little bit of tinkering. I'm sure after watching this video, you've got about 100 million questions and that's totally okay. You can always leave me a comment on YouTube or on the blog and I will help answer your question as best I can. But I hope you enjoyed this video. This is something kind of different that I haven't really done before. And it was just kind of an experiment for me. Hopefully it helps you out. Um, it might give you more questions than answers, but I don't know, we'll see. So if you like this, that's great. Um, if you wanna see more like it, uh, see more videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can learn more about all these pens on gouletpens.com. Thanks so much for spending time with me today and be sure to write on. <laughs>